everybody. Lake Speed Jr. with Brad Lagman. I'm from Total Seal. He's from QMP Racing Engines. So let's talk surface finish. If you're paying attention to our posts over the weekend, we were showing the holder that Brad makes that holds the profilometer, which is the tool he used to measure surface finish on cylinder bores. You may be wondering, why is that important for piston rings and piston ring seal? Well, surface finish is what holds the oil that acts as that gasket that allows the piston ring to be lubricated and to seal. Without that, engines don't work very good, do they, Brad? No, sir. No, All right, sir. so Brad, here, I'm going to flip it around here. I want you to show the guys and the ladies who are watching what's on the screen here and explain it to them. Okay, this is basically what the profilometer is picking up. So all the deep lines is going to be the valley. The lines in the center, we see it's kind of a little bit boxed in. You can follow that red line. That would be the RK. So that's pretty much the middle. That's and the then core roughness. The core roughness. And then the little lines up top is the peak. Okay, so to get an average deal, uh, whatever the application is, uh, street car, race car, what kind of racing, what kind of ring, uh, supercharger, any kind of power adapter, all that would be different. The type of fuel, uh -huh. methanol versus gas. Exactly. Everything would be different, so everything has a different place. This particular one is for diesel. So she's pretty rough because it has a chrome ring. Yep, so, so 42, 58, the peak really is irrelevant. As soon as you rotate the motor over, the peak's going to come down. But you have to have that, that big K and the big RBK. It's got that chrome ring. You have a contaminated oil. You've got contaminated oil. Well, diesel, you got, you, diesel. There, there's lubricity to it. But, like you said, chrome ring, you right. really have to wear that bad boy in. And the top of the block on like this particular case of the Duramax, the first inch and a half is all induction hard. So it's okay. like hard spots in it. So okay. it's like staff like that. And it looks like a checkerboard. Well, it's super hard right now. So if that was smooth, you'll never have a chance to break the ring. Right. right. So it needs all that. But that's just a diesel application. So okay. you want to have a full on race deal, it's gonna be a lot smoother. So if you saw that, the numbers come way down. So now we're talking 22, 35. It's so almost half the number. Half the number. You know, because we won't have ring break in or nothing like that. And you can see the valleys, how the valleys much shallower, shallower they are. Correct. And then you can see peak to the valley comparison in this little green graph compared to how much difference you have from the peak to valley in that graph. That's how you can justify that. It's easy to look at it like that. Oh, that's, that's a great visual because it is different right. applications, different this, surface finish requirements. But if you looked at this, this graph is in perfect line with this graph. So now you can really see it. Oh, you really can. You know? Yeah, you really can right there. So that'll tighten up as this gets smoother and stuff. That, that's a good graph that Mark came up with. And it's easy to look, look at. When I use this software, instead of trying to read everything off the profilometer itself, this is like a remote view. So I have it. But okay, yeah. I'm just trying to read the numbers off this. Right. You have to scroll through it. No, you just let that feed yeah. to the software. Software allows you to really dig in. into it. If I want to measure it, trigger it, I just bring the mouse to it, hit measure, and it, it's moving. I put this in the board with my trusty clamp. Yep, the thing and works fantastic. It. And then it moves it automatically, and I don't have to mess with it. That way I can test it in three or four spots per cylinder to get like an average. Because you know what, people that, that trace the cylinder, you can't just check it once. Oh no, oh no. It's kind of like trying to measure it, measure a bore with a dial board gauge in only one location. Right. It doesn't tell you the whole story. Multiple that. points of data gets you a clearer picture. I do four spots around the top because that's where the most important part is. Okay. Uh, and then I do an average from that. And then you can build an average. I put like a little spreadsheet. You can see this. We're moving around. Moving around. So I built a little spreadsheet. So you just plug the numbers in, and then it'll automatically build an average for you through Excel. Oh, that's perfect. Which is really simple to use. So your four measurements you took per All cylinder, right. and then that gives you an average for that cylinder. Correct. And then that gives you the average. You can look at it and see for the 
the Look. entire engine to see where you are. Yeah. Makes it, makes it easier to, to visualize it. See? Yeah. You know, so another thing is, and a lot of people overlook this, is how do I get to the right surface finish? Ah! We were talking about our braces earlier, weren't we? How about braces? We're talking about hardness of the block is, is everything. So stock block, we'll say 180 for now. Uh, dark block or aftermarket blocks would be maybe 200-ish for now. Uh, dark sleeve would be like 230 to 240 for now. Or back graphite block, something like that. Well, to use the same abrasives is tricky. You know, you, you might need one more depending on what finish you're trying to get to. Um, for for your finish, the total finish of what you want. Right. So you need to be aggressive and check. What I'd like to do is check the RC before I go to finish it. So if I know that I have to be rough, like the diesel, my RZ can't be 180. So explain to me what the RZ, RZ is. RZ is an average of all of those. Okay. Of the, of the peak, the valley, and the pool. So it's easier to look at when you bore it. So when I bore it, and I bore it on a CNC that's pretty smooth, it's a 500 RZ, so it's pretty rough. So when I have to get to that real thick, uh, deep level where everything's really coarse, I know that my RZ, before I put the finished stones in it, has to be 240, 260, 270 in that neighborhood. Or I won't be able to get to the, the core numbers that are deep in the 50s and the valleys that are in the 60s and the 70s. You just won't be able to do yeah, it. You, now, did, you, did, you didn't start rough enough to end up there. Up. Exactly. Yeah. Just like if you wanted to be smoother, you can't be that rough. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you need another uh, another process in between the two. So Got like on the diesel, it will just, we're just pretty basic. Like an op one, op two, op three on most stuff. So I won't even use the op two on diesels. I'll go right from the op one to the finish. Okay. That way it's close enough for me to get to that valve. I need to bring that down, I'll use the op two. That will take care of most of the middle of the road stuff, say 10, uh, 25 to 30, 35 to 45. If I wanted to get it smoother than that, I'm going to have to put one more process in there. Right. To get it down to like a you know, full race steel, where if, you, know, you want like a peak around four, and you want the, the K in the teens, and maybe the valleys in the 30s. Okay, well, you need a whole other process because you've got to get some of that aggressiveness out of it. So you shorten that up. So now my RZ will be maybe 150 before I start to finish. And then you can get to that point. You know, it's all about abrasives and pressure. And then you're going to say you're using more than one stone, more than one process more than one in there. Right. Now it's four processes to get something that's good. Got it. Compared to diesel, two processes. Yeah. So in, in the middle of stop, it's basically the middle of the road stuff that you guys would call want to make some laps, mm -hmm. that's a three-process deal. Pretty simple to do. You know, a lot of other stuff, uh, to go smoother than that, you know, that's, you just, you have to have another set of, another set of abrasives to get it smoother. Just like if you had the old CK-10. Right. You know, you got the, you know, the 180, 280, the 400, 600, 800, you know, it's, it's another process when you're going to do a full-on competition. So, one of the things I heard you say, and I just want to say it again to repeat it, and I'll flip back it around that way. I'm not putting on you to say that. I'll say it. If you have four different block materials, gray cast iron, we'll call it a hard nickel block, like a dart, you know, uh, yeah. aftermarket block today, a sleeve block, or say a compacted graphite block, yeah. if you run the same stones, the same abrasives, at the same speed, same load, with the same fluid, you will have four different surface finishes. Correct. Correct. Yeah, it's just not going to be the same. Never going to be the same. And those, that variance can lead to big performance differences oh, in terms geez. of does it seat in, does it wear the rings out right. too fast, all those things sure. matter. If you did like your basic three process, just, we're going to go from one extreme to another. On the sleeve to the stock block, the stock block would be so rough, you know, it, it, it would be it would be rougher than diesel. Yeah, it, it takes too much off. It, you know, because the it's, yeah, it takes too much off. So, so deep. 
So you, you'd have to sneak up on that to shallow it up because the material's right. not as good. You know, easy enough. Okay, so the whole reason we're saying all this is one: these guys are really, really good at this. Uh, we refer people to him all the time because he knows the stuff. Because as you can see, the equipment-wise, I'll spin it back around. They got great equipment. I won't just real quick so you want to see all that stuff. They have so much work they are doing here. And let's look at the drawers. They have all kinds of abrasives because they do all kinds of engines. All kinds of ones. We, we have abrasives for days. And what's in that bottom drawer down there, Brad? This one is for specialty stuff. This was actually for some sumi bore stuff. Similar to Nicosil, maybe a little bit harder in Nicosil. Um, had to do it, had a couple customers that were circle track racing and Jimmy Hitch Lemon can't, can't go any bigger. We put everything to the max, otherwise you're not going to win anyways. But you need different abrasives to be able to pull that cord material. And it's, it's tough to hold. It is really tough to hold. Oh, it yeah. Right it is a booger. It is tough to hold. And it, it is a lot of learning to get it to work. Uh, different abrasives I tried, and it's it's really tricky at that time. That's awesome. So, all right, to finish up, one, Brad, thank you so much for your oh, time. Yeah. We really appreciate you doing this. If you found this interesting at all, my man Keith Jones, who works for the Total Seal, will be doing a webinar with PERA in October talking about just this topic. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Bye. Beautiful.